Hi there. My name is Chris Nichols. I'm a real estate agent with TaylorMade Deep Creek Vacations and Sales, and I'm happy to present my 2022 real estate sales report for Garrett County, Maryland. Let's jump right in. So the key takeaways from 2022 is that it's still a seller's market. The sale prices are still climbing. They may be moderating a bit in terms of how quickly they're increasing, but uh, sale prices are still high. And uh, they are substantially higher than the past 10 year average. So in the Deep Creek Lake area, 2022 average sale price was $828,000. And the rest of the county, the average sale price was $551,000. Those are 54 and 59% increases over the past 10 year averages respectively for residential sales in uh, Deep Creek and the rest of the county. The properties are selling quickly. So the average days to sell were 85 days in 2022 and that's substantially down from 123 days just last year or the previous year in 2021 and an overall 10 year average of over 200 days to sell in the past 10 years. And also adding to the strength of a, to the sellers is that the number of active listings is, is the lowest level in 10 years. So even accounting for kind of the cyclical nature of the listing uh, market that, that that level is still very low. Looking overall at all of the 2022 real estate sales in the county there were 831 sales and over across all the property types of commercial farm land residential and residential leases the average price was four hundred and six thousand dollars and a total of three hundred and thirty eight million dollars was transacted for all Garrett County properties in 2022 Mostly we'll be looking at the residential real estate market. That is the overwhelming value of all the transactions. 86% of the value of all the sale prices in 2022 were comprised of residential real estate sales. Looking at the geographical distributions of the distribution of the sales on the left is a map of Garrett County that shows all of the property transfers in Garrett County for 2022. This is directly from the Maryland Department of Planning and it's a little more than all of the sales. Anytime anyone transfers a property, whether that's just a legal entity or to a family member, it's recorded in here. But what's interesting to look at is the concentration of both the number of sales around the, uh, around the lake and the value of what's called the consideration or essentially the sale price, the transaction price and the hotter so-called colors, red and orange and yellow represent higher sale prices. So you see most of those hotter colors are around the lake. You see a scattering of them around the rest of the county. Those typically are very large land purchases that reach those higher levels of price value. <clears throat> And as a bit of an aside, to examine what we exactly talk about when we're talking about Deep Creek Lake area properties, uh, the planning department came up with a special district. District 18 was created to categorize these properties that are in this Deep Creek Lake influence area. It's not a real election district. There are 17 election districts but in the database, uh, District 18 is something you can select so that you can pull out just these Deep Creek Lake area properties and examine them and analyze them as, as their own group. In this graph, we've got a, a lot of information presented, but we're really looking at the, uh, the average sale price for that Deep Creek Lake area and the rest of the county. So the sale prices uh, by year are shown in the lines and then the number of sales are shown in the bars with the corresponding colors. So blue shows the Deep Creek Lake area, red shows the rest of the county. And you can see just looking back to the beginning of the data set that we looked at from 1993, you can see an interesting trend developing. Even then Deep Creek Lake area properties were 
on average selling for higher than the rest of the county. But there was kind of a, a steady diff delta between the two of them that persisted until the late 90s. And then they that gap between the two property areas significantly diverged. And there's some interesting explanations that range from increased access to the lake area from the DC Baltimore area due to I-68 opening up and, and becoming more used. The uh, lake area also had a major sewerage upgrade that allowed for increased uh, uh, housing and, and units to be built. So you definitely see that increase divergence between the two prices going up until the financial crisis and the recession 2008 time period and you see a, a bit of a boom and a bust cycle occurring here with a bit more of a a bust for the lake area and a little more erratic price than the rest of the county and then the past few years uh, due to covid you see that ramp up substantially in prices and that slope of that line for the Deep Creek Lake area much more than the rest of the county and then in the last year you see that slope starting to level off uh, for the rest of the county the increase from 2021 to 2022 was only one percent in the average sale price well six percent for the the Deep Creek Lake area and if you look back over a 10 year time period, you see an increase from the 2022 sale price over that 10 year average of about almost 60% for the Deep Creek Lake area, while the rest of the county that still a substantial 54% for the 2022 over the 10 year average sale price. And you can see some of that reflected as well in the number of sales. You see that peak occurring in the 2020 and 2021 times for the number of sales at the lake and the rest of the county and the number of sales for 2022 has returned pretty much to what happened in 2019. But as a lot of these trends are indicating, properties are selling more quickly. Over the past 10 years, the average days to sell, so from listing to sale to settlement day, the average 10 year average has been 202 days. Uh, last year, or the previous year in 2021, that went down to 124 days. And in 2020, due to it was 84 days to sell a property. This is for all property types in the entire county. And, uh, I don't know that this average is, can go down too much more. There's some hard limits on just the amount of time it takes to process a title. Typically, that's typically about a month. Uh, there's you know, definitely ways that you can rush that along, but uh, that's, that's gonna be the hard deck for most property transactions. So on average, I don't know that that uh, days to sell can be too much lower, but that trend is still definitely prevalent. As well, properties are still selling very close or at the listing price. This graph shows the ratio of sales price to list price. So at 100% values, that means that the property sold for the price that it was listed at. And again, over the past 10 years or so, that has been around 92 to 93%. But in the past few years, that has been more around 98%, you know, and you'll see prices where instances where prices or the property sell significantly above the listing price. Uh, but on average, they're still, you know, a little bit less than what, what they get listed at. But you do see in the past few months over on the right of this graph that that might be coming down, whether that's a cyclical uh, item due to the season or not, we'll have to wait and see, but there is some indication that maybe a window is opening for negotiation on the buyer side. But the number of properties that are for sale is at a record 10 year record low. This is a cyclical pattern of active listings. So they see the, the peaks and the troughs that uh, the, the troughs are for the winter season when pro there are fewer properties listed. Typically, people just are not listing properties that they 
wouldn't expect to sell, and then they are getting listed in the summer. And then you have the the typical ebb and flow of the number of properties that are listed, the number of properties that are sold. But you do see even pre-pandemic that was coming down over time somewhat. And then during the pandemic, that inventory was never replenished quickly enough because the amount of properties being bought just overwhelmed what would naturally come back on the market. So we still see those seasonal cycles, but those peaks have not returned back to the 10 year typical levels. So just to have some conclusions for buyers and sellers to take away, it is still a strong market for sellers. The days to sell are trend, have been trending down, but it doesn't seem likely that they can go much, too much further. And prices are still high, but there may be a peak coming. There's some a lot of factors that will play into that, but there does seem to be some indications that this slope of increases is going down. For buyers, it's kind of a uh, similar story to the past few years. There may be some windows opening for some negotiations, but really the same lessons of the past few years of be ready to buy when you see a property you like, get pre-qualified, have all your ducks in a row. If you are going to have a loan, if you have cash, make sure that's all ready and be prepared to jump on properties because the inventory is low and they are not lasting long on the market. Whether you're buying or selling, I'd be happy to help you build a good strategy to meet your real estate goals. You can contact me, call or text me at my cell, email me, call the office, however you like to do it. I am happy to help you buy or sell your property. And a quick appendix on the recent 2023 assessment. So each year, the state of Maryland, the state Department of Assessments and Taxation assesses about a third of all properties throughout the state. And the state has divided all the counties into three separate areas or groups to assess each of those groups each year or each every three years. This year was area two. You see that area in the yellow in the little map to the right. And due to the sale price primarily graph that we saw a few slides ago, the assessed values of these area two properties went up by 51%. And this is the largest increase of all Maryland counties during this assessment cycle. And we saw why that was, that was that big jump in prices, primarily due to Deep Creek Lake area properties. So this assessment doesn't kick in all at once. It is phased in over three years, but still a a uh, 50% increase in your assessed value is very substantial because property taxes are derived from this assessed value. It's the counties set the tax rate based on a percentage of your assessed value of your property. So a this assessment, this new assessment, even though it is phased in over three years, could drastically change the math of some new property owners or even some existing or some older ones because now potentially your monthly payment goes up if you have your property tax escrowed into your monthly mortgage payment as well as your insurance could go up as well so these are a couple of factors that you may not have been accounting for or the owners may not have been accounting for when they bought the property and for sellers, there, there could be some other sellers out there who now have to get out of their property fairly quickly. They may be fairly motivated and drive prices down somewhat. So that could be something that we see this year of people who now are, are struggling with a larger mortgage payment than they had been projecting and are looking to get rid of their property. For buyers, be aware that the assessment is rolling around for area three, that's in the green, and that will happen in 2024. And if you are looking at a property there, your the assessed value of that property will likely go up from what is listed on the, uh, the property listing. So be aware of that. This is something that is, is a really kind of just come on people's awareness because that assessment came out on the end of 2022 and December 
31st of 2022. So people are just starting to get their new assessments and are rather shocked because they are going up by on average that 51% for their area two properties. Thanks for checking out this presentation. I've got a lot of information on the real estate area, on uh, the local news and lore on my website. I make maps of the county and the, the lake. I have some really excellent maps that show the area in detail you probably have never seen before. So uh, appreciate you checking out this video. Check out my websites if you've got any other questions and hope to see you out and about in Garrett County.